See, this is what happens when you got a GTI and you think that you're above the law. And especially if you got a manual. This is the kind of shit that happens right here. Getting the car accidents. See that? I hate GTIs. Assholes drive them. Hatred is one of those games where you kind of don't understand how it was able to be designed and built without like a slew of lawyers and media people sweeping in and stopping it. And what's strange about it is the media always likes to blame someone for any mass shooting or any murders that occur. I, I really think this all started back in Columbine where you had those two shooters uh, shoot up that school and then the media figured out how much attention they could get by you know ruthlessly covering that news as much as possible because as you know on television and on the internet attention equals money and um, as for hatred I, I noticed that a lot of game reviewers gave it the absolute worst scores they could possibly give it and uh, very simply um, it was inevitable. I, I mean, the simple fact is, any game uh, reviewer, basically, they don't want to seem as if they're condoning the murder of people, uh, especially innocent people. Yet, strangely enough, they give a game like Grand Theft Auto the highest scores they possibly can, even when that game didn't even work at launch. I bought Grand Theft Auto V for uh, my uh, Xbox 360, and uh, the game barely worked. There was a lot of glitches. The online system didn't work as promised when they said it would work. Cause, and it took like a two-month wait before they even patched it well enough for you to be able to play it. Yet, all of these game reviewers gave it 5 out of 5, 4 out of 5, 93%. And the funny thing about it is this game, Hatred, is the inevitable outcome of anybody who sits down and plays a Grand Theft Auto game long enough. Eventually, they're going to end up trying to go for a kill spree, and they're going to end up attacking innocents and attacking the police. So basically, all hatred does is it cuts the bullshit and it goes straight to the chase. What it does is, instead of you having to have real mission objectives, and instead of you having to have any real gameplay, you're just moving around shooting at anything breathing, or anything that turns red and shoots back at you. Now, this game... It's amazing that this game really doesn't have a soundtrack. All it has is a moody uh, tone where it sounds almost like funeral or church music in the background. Everything's in minor key. And the, the game is in black and white, as you already know. And uh, the weapon selections are actually pretty straightforward. They're just guns, submachine guns, shotguns. The enemy AI is actually pretty decent, like... Um, you'd see in any game with isometric view, they're, they're gonna charge you one way or another. None of the enemies ever really cower and run away. They, they come right at you like they don't mind being in a hail of bullets. And um, as you know, the game gives you the option to execute them if you shoot them but don't kill them right away. So, frankly, they gave this game extremely low scores, but me personally, I think the other way. I actually like this game, and I think this game deserves at least an 80%, possibly even a 4 out of 5 score. The game itself is well designed. It ran perfectly on my computer, and um, unlike Grand Theft Auto V, it worked out of the box, and that's just one thing. As for the gameplay experience, you know, you know, playing any game like this takes your mind to some pretty, uh, pretty dark places. But the simple fact of the matter is, it's different, it looks good, it plays good, and this game actually deserves not only a passing score, but an above average score. Obviously, when you're dealing with a society that does its best to crush any dissenting objections, especially one that has a Supreme Court filled with activist judges who, you know, rule against what the uh, the actual uh, majority of the people have actually voted for. You know, this game is about free speech. And because of the fact that other games like Mortal Kombat, and especially Mortal Kombat X, which has you know gotten only increasingly more violent, Mortal Kombat, if you remember, Mortal Kombat pretty much started the ESRB when you had Sub-Zero's uh, fatality and you had a couple other fatalities like Kano's where he rips out your heart. But um, the ESRB, this game, Hatred, is actually proof that the ESRB has failed. 
BSRB is a joke, partially because kids can simply download games. They don't need parent permission anymore. All they have to do is have some $50 uh, uh, pre-purchased game card from GameStop and they can buy pretty much whatever they want. Kids have access to pornography on their cell phones and iPods and iPads. Kids have access to all of the things that when I was a kid was labeled parental advisory. We couldn't even purchase it without a parent being there. But now you've got a situation where all you gotta do is give a kid a birthday present and have a GameStop card and they have instant access to pretty much anything they want. The ESRB has absolutely failed. It was supposed to be there in order to stop games like this from being made and in order to make it more difficult for people to purchase games with adult content. Hatred is labeled AO, which means adults only. Now, obviously, I could be a five-year-old kid or a 10-year-old kid or whatever, and I could have a computer, and I could download this game off of the internet. Nobody would know, and I'd have it, and I'd be able to play it. If you're in Australia, this game is illegal, and there's some other countries where this game is illegal, but because of the fact that we have torrents and all these downloading abilities, whether you're in Australia or not, it doesn't even matter. You can still get it. You still have access to it. So once again, the ESRB has failed. Hatred exists. And what I thought was not going to be a good game, like if you remember Postal, Postal 2, they weren't very well polished. Um, this is actually what those games wanted to be. And it's a whole lot more. This game really plays a lot like Hotline Miami and Hotline Miami 2. What I can say is that unlike Hotline Miami 2, this game is actually easier to play because the camera doesn't draw in so closely that you can't easily see your character and the character's off screen getting ready to shoot at you. So basically, the gist of the game is you move from area to area, killing anything that moves, and you try to make your way to a nuclear reactor so you can blow up the entire city. By games in, you absolutely accomplish that. It's... It's a violent game, it's a hateful game, just as the name suggests, but it works. So, if you don't want to play it, you don't have to, and uh, if you do want to play it, you have access to it. And that's what free speech is all about. It's about creating artwork, it's about getting your thoughts and message out there, and anybody who doesn't like it, based on supply and demand, if they don't like it, they don't buy it. But it still exists just in case there's that fringe demographic that wants to buy it. If you don't want it, if you don't like it, just don't buy it. However, there are people who want to buy it. People who have no intentions whatsoever of causing a mass murder. Anybody who's a mass murderer is going to be a mass murderer. It doesn't take a video game or a movie or alcohol or music or Nirvana or Metallica. It doesn't take that to set off somebody. It doesn't take a Confederate flag to set off somebody. It doesn't take um, people not being nice to them at school to make somebody a mass murderer. That's not what this game is about. This game pretty much is about pissing off the media and about proving that the ESRB has absolutely failed in its inception. So, if you want it, you should get it. It was released on July, f I'm sorry, June 1st, and um, most computers can pretty much handle it with no problem, especially if you have a Core i5 and you have at least two gigabytes of RAM. You should have absolutely no problem playing this game. So, um, if you didn't get it already, I recommend you get it. If this is not your cup of tea, don't buy it. Just go play Mortal Kombat or Battlefield or something. Boom! Your family won't cry for you.